If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds with 3DGameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the EVGA 430 watt power supply. Despite the fact that this is a low cost power supply option, the box is quite nice. As you can see, it does have this plastic wrap on it. Let me remove that. Let's see what's inside. Included is a user's manual as well. The power cord. Four black regular screws and the power supply which is in this bubble wrap bag. EVGA is known for their Supernova line of power supplies, but this power supply isn't part of this line. It stands by itself as an affordable, lower wattage power supply option. Now, how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand this, you need to know what rails are. And rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now, in this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 120 watts, and the 12 volt is 406 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. And the plus 3.3 volt is 24 amps. The plus 5 volt rail is 15 amps. And there is a single plus 12 volt rail, and that's 34 amps. Now, there are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. And the first one is wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now, generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig will require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. And this power supply falls outside of that range. It's below 500 watts. However, if you are building a low, you know, kind of like a lower end gaming rig, maybe you're thinking about building a home theater PC setup and doing some gaming on it. Well, this power supply should be more than adequate for that. However, if you are building a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. And if you're building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency at typical load and this power supply's efficiency is 85% at typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC or active power factor correction assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics corrects input voltage and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully this power supply has a PFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Now many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets the basic 80 plus certification. Six, try and look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors because this ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. Now this power supply doesn't have Japanese capacitors. And you know what, that's not surprising considering that it is a budget option. Now to be honest, if you're powering a system that is not requiring a lot of power, generally speaking, it's not a big deal. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply with a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. As well, it's important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty. And this power supply comes with a three year warranty. Now it comes with a black paint finish. The housing is steel and you've got lots of ventilation holes plus a quiet 120 millimeter fan. As you can see, the fan grill is kind of integrated within the power supply itself. Here's the power cord connection and the power switch. Now it's not modular, but it has a fair number of leads considering of course that this is a 450 watt power supply. Personally, I prefer modular leads, even in lower wattage power supplies because you really don't get involved with you know all this cable mess everywhere. And if you can get rid of the cables inside of the case, then it really looks great but it also increases airflow. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan.
Now, there's nothing super fancy about this power supply. I mean, it is a low cost power supply, but a good one at that. It's not those unpainted, flimsy, you know, no name, low wattage power supplies that are going to fail. This one comes with a three year warranty and it is 80 plus certified. So if you're looking for something that's affordable and, you know, reliable, and it's going to offer you decent, clean power, and you don't need, you know, a lot of power. Maybe you're building, like I mentioned before, a home theater PC setup, or, you know, a system that you're really not doing anything hardcore on. Well, this would definitely be a great option. And overall, this is a great product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com, and while you're there, check out the pricing.